Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Terrific Tips for Business or Terrific Tips for Business. I'm Terry, your host, and thank you so much for tuning in and joining us today. I have a very special friend with me today, and I love to call her the modern day alchemist because that's really what she is. Her name is Mer Melissa Curran, and she owns the Scented Balance Spa in um, Kernersville, North Carolina. She's actually a certified aromatherapist, and what that means is she really helps you take charge of your physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being through the wisdom of pure essential oils. We're all familiar with essential oils. Essential oils are talked about pretty common day in a lot of places. The thing that's different about Melissa, though, is she makes her own blends because she is a certified aromatherapist. In addition to that aromatherapy, Melissa is also a holistic life coach, and she earned her Bachelor of Science in Business Administration from Gardner-Webb University. As Melissa says, aromatherapy can be found, uh, aromatherapy found her, and it's become her calling and passion. Her mission is to educate all of us on the amazing simple goodness of pure essential oils and how they can really make everyday life not only feel better, but smell better too. Melissa carefully researches and handcrafts aromatherapy products, specializing in skin disorders and pain management. How many of us know somebody who suffers with pain all the time? We all do, we all know somebody who struggles with that, and Melissa has this organic way to help them relieve some of that and feel better. When she is not in her aromatherapy studio blending and creating products for your health, you'll find Melissa with her hands in the dirt, planting flowers, tending to weeds sometimes, mostly, <laughs> and memorized by the ocean, studying herbalism and crystals and appreciating her coffee and wine and bragging about still fitting into our high school charm bracelet. I don't know many people who can fit into their high school anything, so that's a real talent right there. Please join me in welcoming my good friend, Miss Melissa. Thanks for being on the show today. Oh, thank you so much, Terry, for that wonderful introduction and for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, I'm so excited to have you. This is so much yeah. fun because I remember when I first met you, I was like, oh, another oils person, right? Because mm -hmm. we all have so many oils people. But the thing that I've come to learn about you is you're so different because of the oils that you use and how you mix them. So talk to us about how aromatherapy found you and why you think that's such a calling for you. Well, to begin with, I just, I love uh, the fact that it is holistic, uh, that it's plant-based and it, it, it's for the most part, I can't say always, but it's non-toxic. It's, it's really not going to, it, it's going to help you get, be, and stay healthy. And when uh, I used to own a printing company with a business partner, and I got out of that mainly because I didn't feel like I was making a difference anywhere. Uh, and so I went looking for something, number one, that I could make a difference with. And number two, I started researching some medical issues I was having with um, adrenal burnout and my thyroid. And the more I read, the more I started connecting the dots about all the chemicals that, is, uh, that you find in soaps and makeup and hair products and cleaning products. And I don't think we're connecting the dots about our health and all these chemicals. And the more I read, the more I connected the dots, and it ended up being a way to help my health, but I found that I was good at it. I, I was able to blend uh, essential oils that just smelled awesome. And it's like, you know what? I need to do a little bit more. I need to learn more besides just to have a couple of bottles of essential oils and throw them around. And so that's when I got certified. And the more I got into that, OMG, I love it. I love it. I love it. And I could talk for hours on it, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I love it too. You always smell amazing. And so I, I love your tagline. Come smell us. <laughs> Come smell us. Yes. Come smell us. It is, it's so true though, because you can, you walk into Melissa's shop and all you want to do is go, 
because <sighs> it smells so good. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I want you to be able to to walk in and and smell something that's actually going to make you feel better, calm you down, help your sinuses, you name it. Yeah, yeah. So, of all of the blends that you've made, what's been your favorite one to make? My personal favorite. Um, I have two of them, uh, and and most of my blends are actually were actually created because of case studies that I did in aromatherapy school. Um, the first one is called Peaceful Ease, and it just has a, a, a scent to it that speaks to my soul. It's, it's got some basil in it. Um, it's got some grapefruit in it, and it's just this, oh, and neroli. I love neroli, but it just has such a scent that's calming. And this particular blend is for a little bit of depression, some anxiety, uh, but to help balance and ground you. And I think we all need that right now. So that's been a favorite. And I've had that one for four or five years. And one I just created uh, when I was asked to speak to a group about emotional healing. And so I looked for some oils that I hadn't used before. And one of them is called Fragonia. And that's another one where it's like... <sighs> Let me just know. Oh, and I love, and see, I put them in rollerball bottles. And so when you open up the little cap, you can roll it right on your skin. It's already diluted. Um, and so those two, I think, are my true favorites. I just, I use them every day. I just, and if, and if I forget and I skip a day, God forbid, <laughs> I notice the difference. I, I notice the difference. So I love those two. Awesome. So I think one of the biggest challenges for people who are wanting to go down this holistic, all natural life path, right? Mm -hmm. The biggest challenge is trying to dis decipher what they should be buying, what they shouldn't be buying. How do we know if what we're buying is good, is pure? What are maybe some things we should be looking out for when we're looking at essential oils? Um, I, I had to, to do some searching. It just so happened that in aromatherapy school, I was introduced uh, to two different companies that I, and they're the main companies I use. And anyone can buy from these companies, the, um, or Aromatics International, which is aromatics.com. Uh, they go direct to the distiller. They, they've been working with their distillers for a lot of years, and so they know their, their purity level. And the other one is uh, Edensgarden.com. And anybody can go there and order. There's, there's nothing to join. You don't have to buy $1,000 worth. You can buy one bottle of essential oil. And the nice thing about it, both of those companies are small women-owned companies. And so they, they're concerned about sustainability. They're concerned about purity. They offer the reports. See, I have to use a, something called a GCMS report. And that means the oil has been tested to tell you what the chemical makeup is. And that's when you can tell if it's been adulterated or not. And so these, these oils are good. Okay, interesting. So what we want to look for is making sure that they're non, that they haven't been fooled around with. Yes, because they're easy to adulterate. Okay. Interesting. Is and there... That's why cheaper is not always better. I apologize. I didn't mean to cut you off, but that's why cheaper is not necessarily better. Um, because if it sounds too good to be true cost wise, hmm, okay. that's something's not right. Okay. So is there something maybe on the label that we should look out for that it would tell us if it's been fooled around with other than just the cost? No. Um, but, but if you figure, let's, let's say that normally a bottle of a one ounce bottle of lavender is let's say 22 95 and you go somewhere and that same one ounce bottle is 4 95 or 9 95, that needs to be your tip off. Gotcha. Um, you know, they can put the Latin name, I mean, you know, look for the Latin name, but okay. Anybody can do that. I think it's just a matter of talk to me. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. Uh, I've done the research for you and 
even if you don't buy from me, I'm going to help you get pure oils so that you can help yourself. One of the biggest things that you really helped me with, and it helped me to really appreciate you and all of the things that you do, was letting me know that you can actually accidentally poison yourself or your pets if you use it the wrong way. Yep. And so that's a really interesting tip. Are there best practices or, or is it based on the oil that you get? Can you enlighten us on that a little? Um, I think it's more best practices. And, and unfortunately, there's a lot of misinformation out there, which is what I have to combat every day. And it, it some days, I'm going to be honest with you, it's discouraging. Um, best practices. You, you can pick up a bottle of lavender and you're probably going to be fine because lavender is such a gentle oil. But then you get into oregano or you get into lemon balm or even something as simple as peppermint um, and you should never ingest unless you're being supervised by a naturopath or a clinical aromatherapist which is one step above me i'm certified i've had hundreds of hours of training um, but a clinical aromatherapist has even had more hundreds of hours of training. And that's kind of next on my list. But those two people, those two professions can help you and supervise you. You can burn your insides if you don't know what you're doing, literally. Even with a drop of oregano, if you don't know what you're doing, you can burn your esophagus, you can burn your stomach, and then your liver and your kidneys have to process and get rid of all that and guess what you're doing. So the, the, the way I explain it is there is about 10 lemons in a drop of lemon essential oil. Would you sit down and eat 10 le lemons all at once? Talk about pucker face. <laughs> yeah, big time. A few other things are gonna pucker too. <laughs> There was this thing that I saw in a cartoon one, I think it was Garfield, that said, what you eat today burn will burn your ass tomorrow. Pretty much. <laughs> Ten lemons, that'll do it. <laughs> if it's gonna pucker going in, it's gonna pucker going out. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so what would you say is one of the biggest challenges you've had? Because you're a small business owner, you have a small shop. What's one of the biggest challenges that you've had as a small business owner? I think there's been a couple of challenges. Number one is finding my true ideal customer. Uh, and, and I'm a firm believer in the marketing maximum maxim that if you're talking to everyone, you're talking to no one because it's a very crowded marketplace. So I've had to work very, very hard to find, you know, who, who I choose to speak to, especially with the pain management and the skin disorders. And that means eczema and psoriasis for the most part. Um, and, and it took me a long time to narrow it down, only to find out, I think I was talking to the wrong person for a while. Mm -hmm. And so I've had to go back and work and, and change that target because I want to speak to my customer. I believe that the right, when you talk the right language, the right people are, are gonna come out of the woodwork to find you. So that's been a challenge. <laughs> That has been a challenge. Yeah, yeah. And the other one is, is, is just getting the message out where my customers are. And that means, you know, and, and affordably. Um, you know, if funds were unlimited, I'd probably be advertising in Oprah Magazine. But today I'm better looking than I am wealthy. What can I say? So, so it's and just been a challenge. <laughs> Of course, <laughs> but it's, that's been a challenge to get my message out in a, in a marketplace where they're saying, please ingest oils. And I'm saying, please don't do that. You know, so that message, just getting my message out and finding my ideal customer, th those are two big challenges. And I think that is universal to every small business owner, to every entrepreneur. It it is a universal problem. It's one of the biggest challenges that a lot of business owners face. 
So what are some of the steps that you've taken to help you mitigate that challenge so that it's not a problem for you anymore? Well, um, I, I sat down and I, I did some research. Of course, that's where search engines are helpful. And here's the language I want to use. You've got either you or a child. Let's, we'll, we'll start with the eczema and psoriasis. That's a very, those are two very prevalent issues that people deal with. And what, what can I say? Who, who's, number one, who's going to be looking for that? And so I thought about it. And so here's what I came up with. Usually, uh, when, and my audience is predominantly women. There's a few brave men in there. Um, but a lot Yay of times... for the brave men. Hold on. We got to yes. recognize our brave men. Yay for the brave Actually, men. Actually, you do. And <laughs> I am so grateful when men say, you know what? I loved using this. But my audience is predominantly female because they make the decisions about healthcare in the household. So she's, my ideal customer is about 45. She has children and a partner. Um, one of her kids or even her, she's or her husband or partner, pardon me, uh, is dealing with eczema. And you, and you don't necessarily know what triggers it. It could be stress. It could be change of seasons. It could be gluten. It could be dairy. She's frustrated because nothing's worked. Nothing's making it better without causing some toxic, toxic issues. You know, um, you go to a doctor, and, and I, I want to say there's nothing against doctors, please. I, I don't mean that. But I think sometimes... They are hamstrung with what they're allowed to offer and you get a steroid cream and yeah, it makes it go away for a few days, but it's damaged your liver. And now you've got some dark spots on your skin and patches of hair. Um, and who wants that <laughs> when they're not asking questions? And so when I start asking questions, that ideal customer comes out and now I know how to talk to her. I tried to find where she's at is she on facebook or is she on instagram um, and that's the two main places it's going to be social media where i can reach her um, and then just learning to speak her language what is her pain point i'm so tired of nothing working for my child's eczema okay that's where i come in mm -hmm. so and i and love it's, that it's been a journey Oh, sure. Sure it has. I love that story because it really does help me too. My father has suffered with eczema for a very long time and mm -hmm. they thought it was the laundry detergent. They saw, thought it was the soap he was using. They thought it was the food they were eating and he's changed his diet. They've changed the detergent. It, it hasn't changed his eczema at all. And they've well, changed even where they live. They went from New York to Virginia to Florida and it didn't affect his eczema. So he's changed his job that didn't affect his eczema. So, you know, he's done all of the things that you were just talking about and he's like, Oh, well, it just is what it is. When I have it, I just rub user in on it and I'm done. And like, that's what he does. <laughs> I, I think, and this is where my life coaching training comes in. I've learned to ask very pointed questions. Uh, sometimes I still do markets. So if you come to my booth or you come into my shop, I'm going to ask pointed questions. And there, it's not meant for you to necessarily answer, but to think about. Um, wh when you have eczema or psoriasis, your skin is weeping. Mm. And my question is, from a holistic life coach standpoint and an aromatherapy standpoint, what is it that you internally cannot or will not weep about and it's just oozing out of your pores? Mm. It's all connected. Your body, mind, and spirit is connected. So you've got to look at what's going on in your life that you can't weep about. And now your skin is just weeping for you. So changing to detergents isn't going to fix the problem. You've got to dig and figure out, what am I dealing with here? And I know that just sounds a little, woo -woo, but it's true. And, and I think that's where Western medicine has let us down. They don't really see the connection between body, mind, and spirit. 
if one's off, it's all off. Right. Well, and I think our biggest challenge in our healthcare system is that you're only given about 15 minutes with your doctor. Mm -hmm. Most people don't know what questions to ask, so then they don't mm -hmm. ask them. Um, and then they're not getting the answers that they need. The doctors only have so much information that they're given. Mm -hmm. And what's happening is if you have one doctor who diagnoses X and you go to get a second opinion, well, that second opinion has all of the paperwork from this doctor. And so they're likely to diagnose the same way because they're going to read all of that information. Now they're supposed mm -hmm. to keep an open objective mind and opinion, but they're not going to want to put you through a whole bunch of tests again, because they know that your answer is going to be, but I just had that test. So yes. you're not going to want to get that test done again. So they're, they're operating with very extremely limited information. And yeah. so the only thing that you can do as an individual is keep a journal or something about the food that you eat and how did it make you feel and the, the laundry detergent that you use and how did it make you feel and like keeping a journal of how you're feeling after everything that you're doing gives them more information and more of a window into your day-to-day -day life, which is going to give them the power that they need to make better decisions on your behalf for yes. yourself. But most people don't do that. Well, and if you do that, and, and even if you just get a three ring binder or not even that, a spiral bound notebook um, and take a few minutes, even if it's every week to say, um, and, and like for instance, I, I had to keep a journal because I have some food sensitivities. Uh, when I eat pork and chicken and tomatoes and lemon, my the joints in my fingers hurt. Can you see? I don't know if you can see those, um, and and they burn a little bit. And I had to keep a food journal of everything I ate. Was it a pain in the hoot nanny? It was, but it showed the doctor a pattern. And doctors are trained to see patterns that maybe you and I might not see. And you're just innocently writing down everything, but your doctor's saying, oh, okay, here's what's going on. So that's why you're right. If you can just keep a journal, even for a month, just for a month, that gives some, some insight. The more you do, the more you take charge of your health, the better your doctor can help you. Or you're a room therapist. Absolutely, absolutely. So I love that you mentioned too that pain is a specialty or an area of, of deep mm -hmm. interest for you when it comes to the aromatherapy. Share with us a little bit about your experience there and why pain management is something that's precious to you. I have a family member, um, and I don't want to divulge too much because, you know, that wouldn't be very nice, but Fair enough. she has some really bad nerve damage in both of her hands and it is it, it, it's keeping her from working and enjoying her life so as I was going through aromatherapy school and doing the case studies I said I, I, I picked very difficult case studies in in the end and I thought holy smokes you couldn't pick something easier but she's had several surgeries on her hands and nothing helps it, it nothing takes the pain away and so I thought I asked her to be a case study because number one, I needed a case study, not knowing that I'm, I might be onto something here. Um, you can only take so many pain relievers before you're damaging your liver. So part of the case study was I had to go at my end result from several different angles. Let's see what works. Let's see what doesn't work. Keep good notes. They have to keep good notes. So I decided, you know, with, with her hands, is let's try something. Let, let's try a pain blend. And so I did some research and looked at the oils, number one, that were analgesics, that were anti-inflammatory, because inflammation is usually behind the pain. Uh, and it's your body's response to, ah, something's off. Um, and then I realized when you have a chronic condition, such as pain, you have depression. You may not admit it, you may not realize it, but it's there because you hurt all the time. And so we went through a series of three or four pain blends until we hit upon two of them that made a difference. And she lives with a pain level of 10 every day around the clock. Mm. 
And so I ultimately made, um, it's called Pain Genics, and it's a balm, and she would put that on her hands, and then I made a, a complimentary nasal inhaler with some different oils. And she said that she was able to stop gritting her teeth, and she went from a 10 to about a 7. And by getting to that 7 level, she was able to get up and cook a little bit. She couldn't, still can't, you know, it's not a 1, and that's not something I can do. She has to do that. Do you see what I mean? There's that body, mind, body, mind, spirit connection. Um, and, and so she uses that and she said, I put it on, I know what days, like for instance, if it's going to rain, she knows that day is going to be harder and she loads up on it. And she said, it's not as bad. That's what I can do as an aromatherapist. I cannot fix, cure, heal, or change. I, I can't do that. Neither can your doctor. You have to do that. I simply have a tool that your body responds to and loves and it's good for your body. So that, that's where I come in. If I can give you um, a few more hours a day of a little bit more ease, then I've done my job. And so the, the pain, boy, is it, it's just everywhere. I mean, there's so many people in pain. You just look at the opioid crisis or the opioid. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly. And you can see that pain is huge. And that's why it's like, I, I may not have all the answers, but I've got at least one or two uh, to help give you more ease and grace in your life. That, that's what I can do. Absolutely. But it smells good. <laughs> it smells good. And, and I think the, the thing that you touched on there is that everything that we do from a healing standpoint mm -hmm. are just tools. They're mm -hmm. all tools, really. Mm -hmm. And so when we think about that mind-body-spirit connection, I know we talk about that a lot on my show, is that mind-body-spirit connection. Mm -hmm. Is there a tool or a technique that you use to help you do that deep work, do that inner work that helps you to feel better? Um, obviously using the essential oils, but it, it also takes, you know, it, let, let's say you, Terry, want to, to start doing some of this. Some, something's not right in your life and you know it and you don't know what it is necessarily. It, it takes bravery and courage on your part to sit down and say, look, something's not right. Let's dig. And that's actually where aromatherapy can help you. Um, if you ask me to sit down and meditate for two minutes, I, I, I would rather... I think I would rather deliver an elephant than sit down and meditate because my monkey mind just goes bonkers. But that's where I can use my aromatherapy to just chill, calm down. <laughs> um, and I, I'm just, I'm struggling to find, you know, the, the exact words, but as pure essential oils, make a physiological change. They can calm your mind. It's proven. There's scientific evidence to say that certain oils can stimulate you when you're feeling really sleepy. There are certain oils that can help relax your mind. There are certain oils that help you let go of past traumas. There are certain oils that help you face this inner work, which is difficult. I'm not going to lie. It's not easy. Um, and so that's between at being asked to speak on emotional healing and knowing that there's some baggage I needed to get rid of or face and, and move on. And so that was, what's the word, synchronistic? Yeah. It, it came at the perfect time. And so that's where the emotional healing rollerball came in. It's oils that do help you face it, give you courage, help you release uh, and old baggage, negative thoughts, and it just gives you some inner confidence. And is my life perfect? Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I think part of this, this pause that we've been in on our adventure with the, the coronavirus, that's been difficult on everyone. Me too. Yeah. Me too. And I've, I've loaded up knowing ahead of time I was going to struggle. And 
I, I wanted people to know, I did some Facebook lives. I, I wanted folks to know, don't, don't feel like you have to do this alone. Yeah. So back to the inner work, you, you don't have to do it alone. A good life coach can help you. Um, and that may not be me, but I've got several life coach people that I know can help you to give you a plan to move forward in your life. That's why it works beautifully with aromatherapy. And aromatherapy is an amazing tool. So, I think um, one of the questions that I hear all the time, or, or that I used to hear all the time, I don't hear it as often anymore, but one of the questions that I hear is, why would I go see somebody to tell me how to live my life if I don't want to live their life? Um, I want to live my life. And so maybe we can shed a little light on what kind of questions a life coach might ask to help somebody get some of that inner work done so that they can find their path. Um, a life coach will ask you, where are you feeling stuck? And, and not everyone may know what feeling stuck is all about. Sometimes you just feel like nothing's working out. I, I'm doing everything and nothing is working out what's going on and a life coach will start asking you questions about um you know what keeps showing up in your life what circumstances are you always like for instance if let's say you've got some money issues and, and you're into retail therapy and you're not sure why um there she or he will start asking you some very pointed questions it's not to give you an answer it's for you to look for your own answers. A life coach is not here. I'm not here to tell you how to live your life. I'm here to show you a path where you can find your own best life. Because sometimes when you're stuck or you feel depressed or you feel angry, these are real emotions, but it's showing you something is not right in your life. Now do something. Gotcha. Don't just sit there. <laughs> So I, I think um, life coaching is a noble profession and I, I use it mainly in aromatherapy to ask, like I said, the pointed questions. Um, I think life coaches are amazing and they don't just talk, 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 talk. They say, here's what I want you to think about. Here's maybe what you can look at. They give you a path and you have to take it. It's up to you to take it. So that's what aromatherapy is about too. It's a tool. It's up to you to use it. Right. It's always up to you. It's always up to us to make the mm -hmm. decisions for ourselves. And mm -hmm. my husband's actually reading a book right now by Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart's a big comedian and he was on the Joe Rogan podcast. I love Joe Rogan. We watch a lot of Joe Rogan in this house. Um, I can't wait to have him on the show someday. It's coming. <laughs> Put that out there to the universe. He's coming on. It happen. He's going to come How on. about this year? <laughs> <laughs> He's going to come on. Um, but he had Kevin Hart on the show. And Kevin is a really grounded, very centered person. And you, you don't mm -hmm. expect that from a comedian. Mm -hmm. um, and he was talking about, we all have to make the decision that our life and our health is important enough. Mm -hmm. to be active, to do the things that we need to do to take care of ourselves. Because at the end of the day, nobody's going to take care of us for mm -hmm. us. We have right. to do that work. We have to show up. You can pray if you're religious, you can pray all day long for things to be easier. But really what you need to be praying for is to be better. You need to be looking at ways that you can take the action Ask for the strength to do the thing that you need to do. Ask for the, the guidance on what thing you need mm -hmm. to do. But you still have to do it. You still have yeah. to be the one doing it. Because if you pray, it's nice. It makes you feel good. But it's not going to solve the problem. No, it's not. And whatever the problem is. We, we can't, I think part of... of if you want to say part of the problem in the bigger picture is we sit there and we watch TV and we see all these commercials for all these pills that if you think you have diabetes or if you think you have this, or you think you have that, let go to your doctor, ask for this pill. And at the end of the commercial, everybody is happily merrily skipping with their family or having a 
cookout and life is just wonderful. When in fact, what you're doing is you're putting a bandaid on a bullet hole. You're, you're not fixing the problem. You're fixing the symptom. So it goes away and you don't have to think about it, which is where the life coaching and the aromatherapy come in. You have to be willing to look at the icky parts. Um, and I had like, and I'll give you, for instance, I had some childhood trauma. Mm. A lot of us do. Mm -hmm. It's not a story I really am proud of, but I had to go back and look and see <laughs> how was I still carrying that around? Mm. How was that that's still impacting my life? How was I letting it impact my life? <laughs> <laughs> and that's the key, right? So there's a, a TV show um, on Netflix called The Kaminsky Method, I think is what it's called. And in the first episode, um, the main character is teaching an acting class. And he's telling the, the class to feel the emotions of a past story. Mm -hmm. And there's this kid who's like faint down on this chair, like, woe is me, like the world is coming to an end. And he comes up behind the kid and he said, what's the matter with you? And he said, my parents, my parents, this, my parents, that, my parents. And he, he looked at the kid and he said, how old are you? And he said, I turned 30. And he was like, well, I guess childhood's over. Time to be an adult. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Basically, that's it. Just because my mother was an ax murderer doesn't mean I have to be one. Right. Just, it, it, just because, I mean, at the end of the day, we all have some life that's happened, something that we want to look at our parents and say, you, 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 but really how long are you going to carry that around with you? Exactly. You're, you're your own person. At some point or another, you can look at them and say, you did this, but this is what I did to make it better. So thank you. And, and you have to come to terms with what happened. Uh, you can't change what happened. You can change your perspective on it. Do I like it? Nope. But I don't let it control me anymore. Um, and, and I think the story, the story that we tell ourselves about it, we can change. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And oh my gosh, have I told a horrible story about myself to myself for years. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I think it's more prevalent in women. We, we get this, this feeling of it's just not good enough. I'm not good enough. And yes, I am. <laughs> I, I have very special gifts. You have very special gifts. I could, I could do the same thing that you do as a marketer, and yet we would be different because you have very special gifts and I have very special gifts. And so I think that's the other place. I want to help women to understand that beautiful women come in all shapes and sizes and colors. And we need to stop with the, I'm not good enough. And again, that's where aromatherapy can help. I'm saying it's, it's not a magic fix-all or a cure-all, but it's a tool. It's an amazing tool that I believe has transformed my life. And that's the message I want to get out. Um, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. And I'm here to rah-rah and be a cheerleader for other women and say, yes, you do have a special gift. You are amazing. Yeah. That's what I do. And I think it's beautiful because it's the message that you need to hear too. You are beautiful. Yes. You Thank are you. amazing. <laughs> you really are amazing. And I call you the modern day alchemist because I've never met anybody who has the talent and skill that you do. You know, somebody gives you a challenge that they're faced with and you like go up into your head for a minute and then you're like, okay, I know what we need. We need da, 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 da. And I think I have the solution for you. I just need to play with it a little bit. And it's yeah. amazing. Who do you know that can do? I mean, we all can do that, but for different things. Yeah. But you do that in, in the most amazing way when it comes to essential oils. And I think we Thank don't you. use the term alchemist anymore because it is very. Woo woo. Well, I don't. I don't, see, I, I don't see it as that, but people I get hear, I hear woo-woo and I think witch doctor. I don't think you're a witch <laughs> doctor. <laughs> no. Right? Um, and, and a lot of times people, people still feel like aromatherapy is 
out there, um, not realizing that it's complementary and, and to their Western medicine. And I'm not a doctor. I don't even play one on TV. But I just <laughs> know I have these amazing tools that it, if you are experiencing something, um, I can help with that. Yeah. And just to give you an idea, uh, one of my clients uh, has had used to have horrible panic attacks. She'd have them several times a day. She couldn't drive. She would call the EMT four and five times a day because she knew she was dying. And she still has to be on her medication, but I made a blend and it, I, I keep it in my rotation. It's called anxiety ease. It's for panic attacks mm. and she uses it. And she, between that and a little bit of coaching, she was the case study. Um, we've got her driving. She hasn't had a panic attack in a while, but my point of that is she is still on some medication because that's good for her. But the aromatherapy works with it uh, to help you help yourself. And that's what I want to do. So. I love it. I love Thank it. You. I have a friend I need to send to you for that anxiety ease too. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I learn so many new things every time we talk. And one of the things that you had talked about was the biggest challenge was identifying a target market profile mm -hmm. and then figuring out how to talk with them. And you really enlightened us on some of the steps that you took to figure mm -hmm. out the language that you need to have. You started focusing in on the problems that they were having mm -hmm. instead of here's my solution. You weren't a solution looking for a problem. You were seeking out the problems and you were building the solutions for them. And I think as small business owners, if all of us could stop trying to say, here's my product, here's my product, here's my product to anybody who's going to listen and start taking the time to say, no, what problems does my product actually solve? Mm -hmm. Who, who has those problems? Mm -hmm. who, who are those people that have those problems? Where do those people hang out? Where do they get their information from? Where do they learn? Where do they, what hobbies do they have? Where do they work? If we can start to answer some of those questions, now we can start to strategically place our business in front of the perfect customer and have the conversations we want to have so that they can become our customer and we can help them through the work, the deep work that they're doing for themselves. Absolutely. We're all working on we are. And we've all got a pain point. We've all got something that keeps us up at night and how am I going to fix this? And, you know, it's been... Um, a little disconcerting because I, I I don't want to ever be tone deaf to any issue. And of course, we're dealing with a virus uh, and and with Black Lives Matter. And those are two huge concerns that, that the world needs to deal with and America needs to deal with this. And yet I know we all need to make a living. Um, and so that's been a, a, a challenge to say, I have a product. I know you might be feeling stressed and not come across as tone deaf. Well, you idiot, go sit down. I, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to stay relevant. So that's where I tried to stay tuned into social media and to let people know I'm here. Yeah. It, you know, how, how can I help today? We're all struggling. Uh, we're coming out of it blessedly. <laughs> Um, and, and so that was another issue. I didn't want to be tone deaf. I, I wanted you to know I'm here to help. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Well, and I think the question that you're asking people is how can I help you? Mm -hmm. What's going on with you? And you're willing to listen to them. And even if what they're saying they need help with is not something you personally offer or can do, <laughs> You know, you have a bunch of people that you can say, look, I'm not the person you need, but you should probably go talk to this person. Exactly. And that is something that helps people. That makes you even, even more of an alchemist because now you're not just looking at how can you make a special blend to help somebody. Now you're looking at how can I blend people to help somebody. Absolutely. And I, I am honored to be part of a community in Winston-Salem uh, that has other complementary and alternative health practitioners, and like a reflect, 
reflexologist, um, a Reiki practitioner, the yoga folks that are so wonderful because yoga is so good for your body, mind, and spirit. Um, just, you know, an acupuncturist. Different people like that who we can all work together uh, and give you um, a way to take charge of your health <sighs> holistically. Let, let's let's address all of it because you can't address one without addressing all of it. So, <laughs> and it, it is work. It does take work, but we do need to address the whole. You can't address individual mm -hmm. parts because every individual person is the sum of all parts. Mm -hmm. We're not just one piece. And I know you told me not to do any math, so I'm going to get off those parts. <laughs> <then>. <laughs> Please don't throw math at me. <laughs> it's Friday. <laughs> it is Friday. It is. Um, <laughs> but, but we really do need to look at every piece of, of what makes us us mm -hmm. and start to figure out the best solutions. And I personally love alternative medicine. I have been a big proponent of alternative medicine for a long time. I've been a patient of chiropractic care for mm -hmm. 12 years now. Um, mm -hmm. I strongly believe in chiropractics, massage therapy, reflexology. Those That's yes. how I stay healthy. And yeah. people look at me and say, do you have health insurance? No, I don't. Well, when was the last time you were sick? I don't know. And that's Probably be before you started seeing the massage therapist and the chiro chiropractor and the reflexologist. Yeah. And before I knew about you and essential oils. <laughs> <laughs> and the food, the food that you eat makes a big difference mm -hmm. too. And so we went vegetarian over a year ago now. We've been vegetarian in our household. I don't buy meat anymore. So people okay. talk about how expensive meat is. Yes, it is expensive. And it has a lot of hormones in it. And what do yeah. hormones do? Hormones cause inflammation. Yes. And it's hormones hormone mess up a whole bunch of other things. And that's where, again, it's all connected. <laughs> but plants don't. Plants don't have hormones. Yes. And see, your body knows um, exactly what's what you're putting into it. And your liver has to filter every single thing that you put on your skin and in your, in your mouth. And even the water you drink... Um, it has heavy metals in it. And so it, your liver's got to work overtime and that's why you should be kind to your liver. And I, the other thing I want to say is up until about, I want to say the mid 20th century, maybe early 20th century, aromatherapy, which includes plants, trees, berries, flowers, uh, herbs, botanicals, that was medicine. That's what was used as medicine. Nothing on the earth was wasted. And then Big Pharma was born. And now we watch a TV commercial and we can get a pill and it all goes away. And, and we've gotten away from, we've gotten away from the basics. And I, I want to spread that message. I, I have an awesome tool, an yeah. awesome tool to help you get back to your basics. Well, and I think it's important too that it is, it is a tool. It's one piece of the puzzle. Yes. You still have to do the work. Because at the end of the day, even with the big pharma medications that they give you, that's just a tool too. It's only mm -hmm. one piece of the problem. You can't take a pill that's going to help you drop 100 pounds tomorrow. It doesn't happen. No, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You didn't you get can this take plan overnight. You yeah. can take a pill. You can have a balanced diet and you can exercise. And then you're going to drop 100 pounds maybe in a year. But exactly. you have to be consistent with what you eat the pill that you're taking in the exercise. Well, let's be honest. If you drop the pill out, you're still, it's what you eat in the exercise. That's going to get you to lose that hundred pounds. The pill had nothing to do with it. Exactly. The pill just made you aware of all of the other steps you were doing to help you get that result that you were looking for. Because most of the time you're not aware of the things that you're doing. And so then you just do, 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 do and hundred pounds is on and you can't get rid of it because you're not paying attention to what you're putting on your skin, what you're putting in your body. And what you didn't get that them. way overnight. You're not going to get out of that overnight. See, that's the thing. Yeah, that's right. And I think the other thing is people don't understand when you take some of these toxic chemicals, um, there's huge, nasty, nasty side effects. Not only are you going to have to heal from your illness, but now you have to heal from the medication. And I don't think we've connected the dots. 
and that's part of the other part of the message is let's think about what you're putting on and in your body because nothing can cure you except you and it goes back to having the right tools well and i hear all the time my parents always say well my mom and dad never had x y and z or i never had x y and z and i say well but your mom and dad lived in a time where wheat was grown above ground mm -hmm. in the sunlight so mm -hmm. gluten intolerance didn't exist because it was farmed it was organic and it was natural now wheat's grown underground in labs with roundup well roundup <laughs> explodes the bellies of worms what do you think it does <laughs> to people um and we're eating no. And this is why we have a gluten intolerance in our country. Well, we never had a lactose intolerance in our country. Right. Well, all, farmers had a lot more land back when your mom and dad were growing up or raising you. And they had a lot more organic processes and they had a lot less cattle. So they had more room, less cattle, so they could do things slower, more organically, more naturally, there wasn't as many preservatives in the products. The milkman delivered milk to your door every day. We don't have that anymore. We want to go to the grocery store once a week, buy our milk, and we're good to go for the week. Well, all those preservatives have a compound effect. And now we have a and hormones. And yeah, there's hormones in it. Yeah. And, and it is funny when you have conversations with those, the previous generations, the conversations about, well, I don't know why this is a problem. This was never a problem for me. Well, you're right. It wasn't a problem for you because you didn't have the things that we have in our world today. And that's why it wasn't a problem for you. We tried to speed things up. We tried to make things more efficient. Mm -hmm. And in doing that, it actually really burdens the human body because we are of nature. And your body absolutely knows that. <laughs> and every time you use, for instance, aromatherapy, your liver is saying, yay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> thank you for not giving me another pill to process. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Melissa, this has been a fabulous conversation. I want to respect your time and the time of our listeners. I know you have so much more value and so much more information you can share with people. So what's going to be the best way for people who are listening to get in touch with you so that they can ask their questions? I have a website, scentedbalance.com. I am on social media uh, at under scentedbalance.com, Facebook and Instagram. I'm also on LinkedIn under Melissa Curran. Um, my email, before I forget, is balance at scentedbalance.com. And if they'd like to call me, it's 336-837-9827. Awesome. Love to talk to folks and, and um, just share the wisdom, share the passion. Absolutely. Well, I so appreciate you being a bright and positive energy field here in our community. I'm glad that I get to share you with the digital community. And I know that everybody who talks to you is going to be moved and enlightened because you have so much value to share with people. So thank you very much for being here today. You're very welcome. And thank you. I've, I've enjoyed this. I, I was nervous, but you put me right at ease and I love this. Thank you so much. Good. You're so welcome.